Hello and welcome to my Jackpet experiments video uh, on revision. So the revision checklist is we'll be doing lab experiments, field experiments, natural experiments and quasi experiments with definitions, strengths, weaknesses and examples for each one. First one is lab experiments. Uh, a definition, I'm going to put all the definitions, everything I say is going to be on the slide so that you can pause it and copy it down in time, which is the better, my favourite way of revising. Uh, so just feel free to pause it whenever. But a definition of a lab experiment is an experiment that takes place in a controlled environment within which the researcher manipulates the independent variable and records the effect on the dependent variable while maintaining strict controls on this extraneous variable. And you will find an example of this in Mary Ainsworth's 1969 strain situation. The picture in the corner shows kind of what Mary Ainsworth's strain situation was about, but obviously if you don't know, look up in your textbook or the internet, but she was looking at attachment between a infant and a mother and she did it in a lab as you can see with the cameras to record everything she does it so all the variables can be controlled to know the real benefits of a lab experiment you need to know an extraneous variable there are undesirable variables prior to the testing that may affect the results basically there there are variables other than the IV which may affect the DV and this will affect what we want to test. Once an experiment has happened, if the extraneous variable has affected the results, it is known as the confounding variable. These are minimised in lab experiments as they have the ability to monitor the extraneous variables so they don't become confounding variables. For the example I found here, I thought it was important to find an example as that of Pepsi. Everyone says I want a pep I want a Coke and not a Pepsi, although I know personally I actually prefer the taste of Pepsi, which for most people is true. Well, they did, Pepsi did an experiment to try and increase market share. They, they got blind taste tests and went around a few major cities with a random letter on one cup, which was Pepsi, and a random letter on one cup, which was Coke. Uh, obviously, Coke had a beef with, with this study because they obviously found that Pepsi was the favourite one, as you can guess, with bias. But what Coke found is that they put Q with Coke and M as the random letter with Pepsi. People have an unconscious preference with M over Q. Q is not a common letter and it's um, usually found with royalty or odd words, so queen or queer or, or whatever. So it's found with words that aren't used day to day and sometimes have negative connotations. Whereas M has, on most accounts, good connotations, for example, mother or other, other um, examples. We redid the test. They Coke redid the test themselves, and they found people preferred Coke. When they when this is an example of an extraneous variable becoming a confounding variable that affects the experiment, uh, they did it where they didn't have M or Q, and they found Coke. So obviously there's bias there because they're doing it for the good of their product. But this is just an example. The strength of a lab experiment is as easy to replicate as it was held in a laboratory, and it has a standardised procedure which you can follow. And also analyze after they allow for precise, precise control of ext extraneous and independent variables, and this allows a cause and effect relationship to be established. A weakness is that of uh, artificiality of the setting. So, for example, it's not very often we find ourselves in a lab being tested. There's low ecological validity. This means it would not be possible to generalize the findings to a real life setting, and demand carry characteristics or experimental effects may bias the results and become confounding variables. Feel free to pause this at any time so you can copy it down. Field experiments is the next one. They're done in everyday real life environment of the participant where the experimenter still manipulates the IV but in a real life setting so cannot control extraneous variables which obviously we will uh, have a look at in the weaknesses. This means confounding variables can affect our results. Examples of Field experiments are Hoffling's hospital study on obedience. Uh, this is where he got nurses to administer, administer astroton, uh, of which only 10 milligrams should be given, uh, describing himself as Dr. Smith over the phone. But he demanded that he'd give it to a certain patient and it was it was urgent um, and they needed to give them 20 milligrams. Hoffling's study, as we can see in the picture, uh, really shows obedience but also shows how it is effective to test people in their real life situation. If you're ever writing a 60 marker about field experiments, be sure to add it in. 
it measured obedience and he got nurses to administer astrogen, which was dangerous over 10 milligrams. Obviously, in the, the study, the astrogen that they were using was was uh, just water. It wasn't uh, wasn't the actual wasn't the actual drug. But they he described himself as Dr. Smith and he couldn't get into the hospital and he was really struggling and he he called over the phone and told the nurse to to deliver the astrogen to in 20 milligrams that were potentially lethal. Um, to uh, to a patient, but the drug was fake. But the nurses were monitored to see what they did after the phone call. So picture the scene: you work, you work as a nurse. You take a phone call. Uh, it's Doctor Smith. He you 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 don't know whether you know or not, but he's told you to deliver a, a drug which, in twenty milligrams, is dangerous to a to a participant. You think you probably wouldn't do it. Well, twenty one out of twenty two nurses obeyed the rules and didn't even question it in uh, research they broke three hospital rules they're not allowed to accept instructions over the phone the dose was double the maximum limit uh, stated on the box and the medicine itself is it itself as unauthorized for example it was not on the ward stock list 21 out of 22 95 percent of nurses were easily influenced into carrying out the orders they were not supposed to take instructions by the phone let alone exceed the allowed dose again expressing this drug was a placebo it, they weren't willy-nilly giving uh, poor participants um, drugs when other nurses were asked to discuss what they would do in a similar situation this was a control group 21 out of 22 said they would not comply with the order so obviously we can take from this some huge strengths of field experiments is the behavior is most likely to reflect that of a natural setting so, for example, higher ecological validity than a lab experiment, but there is and there is less likelihood of demand characteristics affecting the results as participants may not know they're being studied. Um, and we've got a nice picture of a field growing prosperously. Weaknesses of field experiments. There is control, there is less control over extraneous variables. This may bias the results, and it also may affect the results published, meaning that the results cannot be if, for example, Hoffling's study was repeated again. How sure are we if it was done in a different culture, maybe uh, a collectivist culture rather than an individualist culture? How sure are we that the results would be would be the same? Extraneous variables become confounding variables of, and are published in results, meaning it's less like less easily replicable. Replicable would not help support psychologies of science as much as lab testing would. Yet it's invaluable in some instances, instances like Hoffling's study. Moving on to uh, natural experiments, they're conducted in everyday real life and they're an environment uh, environment of the participants. This means the experiment has no control of the IV and it occurs naturally in real life. Example of Fisher and Geisman's cognitive interview, testing people had already been given the standard interview with the cognitive interview for real life crimes. There's huge strengths of this. Behaviour in a natural experiment is more likely to reflect real life because of its natural setting. It has a very high ecological validity and there is a very small chance of demand characteristics affecting the results, uh, as the participants may have no clue they are actually being studied. Again, good ecological validity because it refers to the extent to which the findings of a research study are able to be generalised to real life settings. Weaknesses. There may be more expensive and time consuming uh, as more resources and people need it. Uh, there is no control over extraneous variables, which we've gone over is obviously a negative, and this may make it difficult for another researcher to replicate the study in exactly the same way. And poor replicability does not help psychology as a science. Finally, causal experiments. Our study, which is an experiment, which is almost an experiment, but lacks key ingredients. The IV has not been determined by anyone, and the researcher or any other person. The variables simply exist, such as being old or young. Strictly speaking, it's not an experiment. They're used when the researcher is interested in the independent variables that cannot be randomly assigned. They usually this happens when the independent variable in question is something that is innate or characteristic of the participants involved. An example, if the anxiety levels of phobic and non-phobic patients were compared, the IV of having a phobia would not come at, about through an experimental manipulation. So, big green tick for strengths. Use of when it's unethical to manipulate the IV, have a, a way of still testing, breaking unethical barriers while still maintaining ethical uh, policies. 
studies the real effects of IV on DV, and this means there is increased realism and ecological validity. Weaknesses with a big red cross. There's co-founding environmental variables are more likely to make it less reliable when findings are, released, are published. We have to wait for the IV to occur. can only be used in conditions where the IV varies naturally, and we need to be aware that being studied means less internal validity.